Welcome students. Welcome back to Journalism 101. My name is Rhonda Guess, as you know by now. I am happy that we're together today and that I'm going to be able to give you information on how to write your first opinion or editorial piece for the Los Angeles Collegian. The LA Collegian is the student voice of Los Angeles City College and has been since 1929 when the college uh, was founded. It was originally UCLA, as you may know. Um, then in 1929, they packed off and went to Westwood and they say they broke off a little twig and they said, you're the Cubs, we're the Bruins and we're out of here. Okay, so the opinion piece is the easiest I find first writing exercise for students. We normally take the best opinions and editorials and we publish them in the college newspaper. And what that does is it pits the students who are in Journalism 101 against the more advanced newspaper students who've already completed Journalism 101 and you compete because journalism or the culture of journalism is very much about competition. So you compete and believe it or not, quite often students from Journalism 101 end up in the newspaper and sort of displace my more advanced students. So that should be interesting. So let's just start with the opinion editorial and that section. I'm sure you've had time or have been inclined to look through the op-ed section of the Los Angeles Times. Here's what you find in the opinion editorial section of a newspaper, which is different from the other sections, or it should be if it's serious journalism. The rest of the newspaper, news, the entertainment section, sports, lifestyle, community, whatever the sections may be, those are told in the third person. The stories are structured as news. Opinion should not be included in those stories. There should be no use of personal pronouns like I, we, us, me. That shouldn't be there. And it should be a story based on facts and sources. But when you go to the opinion editorial section, things are different. This is where, with regard to editorials, it's where newspapers or the newspaper staff speaks with one voice. They get together and they decide on the editorial board of a newspaper. This week, we feel it's important we talk about, we talk about taxes. Or this week, we feel it's important we tackle immigration. Or, something else, something investigative, but it's independent. At many newspapers, the LA Times included, you will find that the newspaper staff that's doing news stories doesn't know anything about what the editorial staff is planning. They are independent and they speak with an independent voice and in the op-ed section, the voices and the opinions expressed can be emphatic and passionate, unlike news. So let's start with where this takes us as a class. Believe me when I say that you have all of the requisite skills to write an opinion or an editorial. Why? Because students have opinions and they're committed to their opinions. So all you need from me is the formula. So much of our journalistic writing is formulaic. So you need the formula from me that will tell you how to structure this piece, how it should be shaped. So I'd like you to get a pen or pencil, get something to write with. Don't rely on your memory, please. And as I always say, a pencil has the longest memory so I'll wait a second and we'll go through these. Ready? Okay. When you write an opinion, and it could be different in other places, but an opinion or an editorial for the Collegian is structured in this way. 
It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Like an essay or a composition you might write. That's basic. A beginning, a middle, and an end. What's important here is how you feel about the subject. So please take notes when I say how you feel about the subject you're writing about needs to be imparted to your reader near the beginning, or as we say in journalism, near the top of your story. So what that means is, this isn't the type of story you create some winding narrative and then in the middle or near the end, you tell the reader. And that's why I believe, no, no, no. You tell the reader how you believe high up early in the story. That's an opinion. You're opinionated at the beginning. You expose that bit of information. So please remember that. That's the first thing. So in the beginning, there's sort of an introduction to whatever it is you're going to discuss. In the middle, we should have some structure. We should have some, some grist, right? Um, you should be telling the reader something that maybe you can support with a statistic or with some information that's in the form of a quote. We don't always use quotations in opinion pieces, but there's nothing wrong with it. Why? Okay, sometimes some opinions turn into nothing more than a rant. You know, like just, well, I think and I feel and, and I believe support what you're saying. There's nothing wrong with that. With You don't have to overdo this. Less is more, but it's perfectly acceptable, even embraced when someone has a quote or some sort of statistic in the middle of their piece. Um, you give examples to support your argument in the middle. At the end, or in the third part of this piece, I suggest that you spend your time closing your reader. There's, there's an art of persuasion in a good opinion piece. And for your own edification and guidance, in Canvas, within Canvas, I have included some two excellent opinion pieces. One by Paulette Meza, What We'll Do When Freedom Comes. That's one that was written by a Journalism 101 student last semester in the spring. And I think it's amazing completely her idea the things I'm so looking forward to you know your opinions but I suggest you read that there's a link to it in the opinion writing section in canvas uh, there's another opinion that was written by I can't recall at the moment but there's a second example for you oh Sarah Boyajian she wrote a great piece about unemployment and about the stimulus checks and it was it's a certain type of piece the voices in the two pieces are counter they're not alike and that leads me to tell you about the different types of opinions but I suggest you read both of those okay so one type of opinion that you'll encounter is the opinion where you praise something or someone. I read the sweetest opinion about a year ago, one of my students wrote. It was called, um, he was praising the Martin Luther King Library on the LA City College campus. He called it some sort of oasis. He talked about how students can go to the third floor where there's a collection of couches and stacks of books and where they can just rest and fall asleep or they can get, uh, they have rooms that are for like conference rooms that students can use when they're studying in a group, close the door without disturbing anyone else. But it was just so wonderfully written and um, I, I liked that. There's also, on the college website, another opinion piece. It's in the form of a reporter's notebook, but it is an opinion piece written by Paulette Meza, again, 
and she spoke in praise of the public library. This was, she's an incredibly gifted writer. It, this was a wondrous piece, and I, I just, I just, I would urge you to read it. Beautifully written. I mean, the editors went through it. I looked it over. I always look over the Journalism 101 pieces, but it's up to the editors, the section editors of the newspaper, to decide what they like and to change your prose, change your copy as they see fit, because it's a student newspaper. I mean, I'm there. I'm on your side, okay? So I am there to tell them sometimes, why are you taking the student's voice? Tell me what you're doing that's better. But generally, I stay out of their lane. That's their province. It's a student newspaper, and students decide what goes in their paper. But for me, I really ask them to improve your copy, not to bring it down. So please look for Paulette Mesa's other piece in praise of the public library. Incredible. Um, so praising something like the public library or the Martin Luther King Library, which my student did. I've had students praise. Um, I've read pieces that were really excellent about, oh, there was a pop-up food market on campus. And some students really thought that this was great. It was something that the current president uh, initiated a couple of years ago. And it's very popular with students. Um, there are other things that students have praised, but more often than not, they are criticizing. Why not? This is what journalists do. And that brings us to the opinion piece, number two, where you expose a problem. For students at LA City College, I think there are two or three subjects that students complain about most frequently. The first would be they complain about the restrooms. <laughs> Not in every building, but in certain buildings, they just complain bitterly that the upkeep is not good. And I mean, we're not squeamish about these kinds of things because this is what journalists do. They criticize, they identify problems and they tell their readers. And that's how they get things changed, sometimes. <laughs> so, the restrooms. The second would be, I think they complain about the lack of a cafeteria on the campus. One is coming. One's coming soon. You can, you can believe it. So they complain about that. The fact that there's not a cafeteria. So that's been something I've seen stories written about for years. The third thing, for some reason, you know, and sometimes it may be because students may not be doing everything they should be doing, but they often complain about counseling. Um, they'll say they didn't get the right information that they needed for graduation, or, or they were told to take classes that uh, they didn't need, or, you know, something happened in that process. And we publish those. We, the editors look at them, and I definitely look at them very closely, because hmm, you can imagine the way journalists use their words often creates hurt feelings on campus. But again, we're not squeamish about what's written. We want it to be truthful and accurate, of course, but we never say, don't write about that. It's going to make enemies for us. <laughs> That's not what journalists do. They speak truth to power. And when you have a student newspaper, the way students speak truth to power is it's the student newspaper speaking to the administration, speaking to faculty, speaking to the sheriff's department, speaking to the city of Los Angeles, whatever, according to whatever the subject may be. So exposing a problem is perfectly all right. I haven't seen much yet, but I'm sure there are going to be stories about students who are unhappy with the fact that their learning is now online. 
Okay, we know why it's online, but uh, I'm sure there'll be opinion pieces about that. So, exposing a problem. The next category would be the call to action. This is a great piece. The call to action is where the student tries to motivate people to do something. This is an election year, so it's perfect. Maybe you want students to register to vote and you want them to turn out in droves. So maybe you're the journalist who says, who just speaks to students and tells them, this is your year, your vote counts. Maybe the candidate you really wanted isn't in it, but you have choices here. There are two, there are major parties, and it doesn't matter who you vote for. Well, it does matter, but you should choose one and vote, participate. So that would be a call to action. I'm trying to think of one of the best calls to action I've seen. Actually, the piece I've asked you to read by Paulette Meza Saldivar, which is called, um, her first piece, which is called, What We Will Do When Freedom Comes. That's a classic call to action. And it's wonderfully written. And I will add again that this was a Journalism 101 student who wrote a piece that was brilliant, brilliant, um, without much instruction from me. Because you already have these skills. You already have the skills of a basic writer. I'm just here to help nudge you into journalism culture and how we write in journalism. The tweaks. Now, I'm going to end up saying this many, many times this semester, but I think you're a bright group because you could do, pardon me, you could be doing many other things with your summer, but you're here with me in Journalism 101. Okay, so here's an instruction for you. In journalism, paragraphs are short. Paragraphs are short. One to two sentences. That is it and then you make a new paragraph. When I get journalism submissions app for the first story, second story, third story, and the paragraphs are like an entire page, I'm thinking the student wasn't listening. That's not how journalism is written. Short paragraphs, that's the first thing I'll say. And you'll hear more about this when you go on your first news story and I give you the instructions. So short paragraphs, mix your prose. By that I mean you can write long sentences and then you write short staccato sentences. You break things up for the reader. This is interesting, but if every sentence that you write is constructed like 22 words with a conjunction and or but in the middle and it just goes on like that paragraph after paragraph, it's taxing, it's boring. So you need to mix your prose. Okay, so let's take a short break. Go wash your hands, get up and stretch or something in our virtual environment. And I will be back with you to wrap this up.